Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy, and in this tutorial we're going to talk about Photoshop's Smart Filter feature that was introduced in CS3. We'll discuss the advantages of using Digital Anarchy's filters as Smart Filters and show some examples. So Smart Filters are an incredibly powerful way of using any filters in Photoshop, but for some of Digital Anarchy's filters it really provides some great features. Applying filters as smart filters allows you to do so non-destructively. And what that means is that you can always make changes to the filter even a year or two later. The modifications that you make are not permanent. They can always be changed. You can save out your file and always make changes later. So for example, if I come up to my filter menu and I apply Gaussian Blur, let's go to the Blur submenu and apply Gaussian Blur, it blurs out my image and that's all well and good. I can click OK and I can always undo this. That's pretty easy. But if I save this file, let's turn the blur back on. If I save this file and come back to it tomorrow, that blur has become permanent. There's no way to undo this in a different Photoshop session you know, tomorrow or six months from now. If three months from now she decides that she really did want this guy in the picture, there's no way to undo that. If I apply something like No Light Factory as a Smart Filter, and actually the first step in doing that is to make this layer a Smart Object. Oops, let's uh, zoom over a little bit. And we can convert this to Smart Object. Do that. And so now it's a Smart Object, and any filter that we apply that supports Smart Objects will apply as a Smart Filter down to Digital Anarchy and go to Null Light Factory. It brings up the Light Factory UI. We'll scale this down a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my presets here. So I'm going to scale this down and put this right over the uh, where the sun is. And we're going to use that to enhance our photograph a little bit. We're going to turn off some of these poly spreads. Change the color that we're looking at. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now you can see that it's listed as a smart filter. And we can turn these on and off at any time. And you can see that if I turn it off, the underlying image is not affected at all. And if I go ahead and save this, I can always come back and turn this off. It's never a permanent application. It's never permanently changed the image. And so that's why it's called non-destructive, is because it's, it's not actually making any changes to your image. So that's a great thing. It gives you this unlimited capability to make changes later, which is nice if you're working with clients or colleagues where you may get feedback and need to make adjustments. You don't end up having endless versions of the same file sitting around because you can go back at any time and delete or modify the filter settings. If this couple comes in and they decide, well, they really don't like the brighter sunset, they kind of like the original image, you know, we can just go back and turn it off. Or if they say, well, I like it, but it's a little bit got too many spikes or something, looks a little bit too unrealistic, we can just double click on it, go back in here, and start making you know some changes again. We'll scale our spike ball down so it's not quite as pronounced, and then click OK and go back to our image, and you can see that it's made some adjustments. So this gives us a little bit more subtle lens flare, which may be more to your liking or more to the client's liking. Now the downside to dynamic non-destructive filters is that they need to be rendered and with a fast rendering filter like no light factory that's really not a problem but it can slow you down especially if you you know stack a whole bunch of smart filters on top of here um, you can really start to see some render times that will slow your workflow down and there's really not much you can do about that it's just part of the price that you pay for having this kind of unlimited undo this unlimited ability to just make changes whenever and wherever you want to make them later on down the line. But for many situations, this is really just a minor drawback and the benefit of using smart filters vastly outweighs the inconvenience of having to render things. For Primat and No Light Factory, as well as some of our other products, smart filters really offer some good advantages. No Light Factory generally renders pretty quickly, making it kind of an ideal filter to apply as a smart filter. Usually we recommend that users apply the filter as a secondary layer. 
you create a black layer that's above your original layer and apply the flare to that layer. And the reason for doing that is so, so that you can come in and make changes later. Obviously with smart filters, you no longer have to do that. You can just apply the filter directly to the image and anytime you want, you can come back and make changes, even obviously years after you've uh, you created the original file. We'll close our wedding picture here. We think smart filters are very powerful and give you a lot of flexibility. While it may not make sense to apply smart filters that take a very long time to render, in most cases it works out very well. So that finishes up this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. And there's plenty more uh, tutorials at www.digitalanarchy.com along with demo filters, sample files, and all sorts of other good stuff. So check out the Digital Anarchy website, and thanks for joining me.